Hello, I'm building some utility into uh, the multi-boxer because I don't want to have to set them all up. One of the big weaknesses the first time round was that I had to set up the action bars um, for each item, for each class, for each type, and I had to maintain separate uh, spreadsheets for them and keep working them all out and add all the macros and things like that. So I do rely on macros because I'm not injecting into the process. Uh, the UI, the macro interface in the game, the client stuff has to help. So things like targeting the leader, following the leader, uh, assisting the leader, they're all things I want to do. I also want to be able to make each of the boxes in a group be able to target and help each other. So I'll be able to say, uh, you know, prioritize the tank, whoever the tank is, and I don't want to be the tank all the time. If you look back at the Scarlet Monastery runs, I was always the tank, I was always the warrior, and I was kind of like spamming Sunder while I was then running the other multi-boxers. Um, I don't want to do that, I want to get melee into the multi-boxer and make them approach a target, um, either by trial and error, so melee classes might, uh, a warrior may for example charge, to get to the spot and then I know they're going to get to the right spot then they just back up a little bit if they need to and, and just work from there um, whereas a rogue for example would have to perhaps um, target the tank assist the tank follow so it walks up to the tank and then begin to melee uh, and then, you know then assist and, and start targeting whatever that was targeting that that bad guy all this needs to be in a script so at the moment I am sending these commands directly. So what I've got now, I've added mouse movement and clicking, and um, this is relative percentage of the client window. So 49.765 and 51.1% of the screen is where you click to hit the macro button. So if you just sit the client up, press escape, which is obviously what key 27 does, I then, move the mouse to that position and click and that's the position it always is at no matter what size I make um, the client that, that's how this works so setting up the general macros what we actually do is we select the first bar which is doing nothing at the moment what that does is go uh, shift or is it control whatever shift one to select bar one we're gonna put in these general macros into bar one the leader name comes from config so inside the configuration I've added leader name so I can say which of these boxes which client name in the group is not a boxer is the point um, that's me playing the boxes are going to be somewhere else a different screen but they need to have focus to do this mouse work and I need to do the mouse work to click on macros click on the icons type in the names but I can do most of this automatically it just needs to be left alone to do it. This is doubly important when we think, I'm gonna play here, but there's gonna be some clients playing on my old workstation machine. They're gonna play on their own over there. I'm not gonna to touch Windows. I'm gonna send network messages from here to that machine. So, though I'll be multi-boxing, I'm not doing it all on one machine. They'll be separated. So. This is the first automatic thing, and what we're going to do is select bar one, press escape. Uh, there are pauses here to let things settle on the screen. These are things I need to. These are nuances. Uh, then we click a position to actually click the macro button. Uh, then we actually repeatedly click the delete button. So I press it ten times. I'm planning to have ten general macros. Um, so if you remember in the client, when you have macros that are yours, sorry, macros that apply to all characters on your account, and then there's macros just for that character. That's where I'm going to start looking at the, the client type. Uh, this is actually wrong. I think Droid 1 is actually a priest. Uh, once we've done that, then we create one new macro. This is my test script. So it's going to create it. It's called follow the leader. It's going to be in icon 1.1, one, one, which is the top left of the grid of macros you can see. I'm not going to make it scroll down and up and down that list. And its actual script is target the leader name. So target zealous might be my script in this case, which it is my script in this case. Um, the one thing I need to do is take out a debugging sleep here. Uh, this is a debug sleep that sets the cursor position. I need to make it just a bit smaller. Um, and I've had to change which key I activate this with. So it was key 
uh, was F12, but F12 opens a bag. So what was happening was I would click F12, which would open the bag, which would start this script running, um, but then escape, the first command of, of escape would just close the bag. And I'd be really confused. I was like, oh, what's going off? And so uh, everything, every time I've done this, it's been a recompile, which is where these come from. These are being copied back in. So I take it off. I just want to run the one, the one at the moment. So here we go. Um, let the priest settle. This is the priest we marched from Dudmorrow through everywhere into here. So here she is, Fer Ferina, Ferina, Ferena. Clicks macros, deletes all the old ones. So I've done that ten times, to two and a half seconds. It clicks it, puts in the name called follow leader, gives it the icon, types in zealous. That's the macro created. The next piece of my challenge is how do I make that? Do that. So I need to click and hold, move mouse and release. Hmm. But before I get too far down this road, I might solve that problem, the click and release thing. So I can put them here um, and do things and then work on scripting these commands, turn these into actual scripted things have a button to reload them so I don't have to keep recompiling the code every time I do this. It's very inefficient at the moment. So if I literally change a, one thing and rebuild, it's it's brought the data back in from the other one. In fact, I need to just change this around. Uh, I don't remember what Droid 4 is, but I don't think it's a priest, and I know Droid 1 is the priest. Droid 4, Droid 4, that was the password. Droid 4, Droid 4, the mage? Droid 4 is a mage. So mage and priest need to swap, but not in that copy of the data. I need to swap them in this copy of the data. So that is priest. That is page. Now, if I build when it copies the file over the swap, and I know if I do that, do the macro thing again, I'll do that, and do the macro thing again, it'll do droid one, it'll know droid one's a priest now. I don't have any way of detecting it. I say again. I don't want to inject anything into the process at all. I want to do nothing. Um, oh, there's the major got left behind, but now at least, there, so it's doing its thing. So there's the, the you can see the Farina specific macros. It's general macros that this is going to go into. In fact, I could do with adding a click on general macros to make sure I'm on that tab. Okay, and then the next one, it would click this one, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, if I, what does that do? If I go macro new, dizzy. So new is actually, it's actually shifted this over. So if I have this to drag down to the bar, so that's drag that to the bar. Let's drag that to the bar. And then I go new, different icon. Let's actually put it there now. It's a little bit random, isn't it? So delete them all. So number one will go new, first one, one, click, one, new, two, click, two, two, new, three. So ah, that's actually moved in the wall that way. One, two, three. What I'll be able to do is copy them down. The wife is now calling. I shall go and think about this while I go and cook dinner. Bye-bye.